Hey guys, welcome to another video. Finally, I guess. Um, so this one's about hair rigging and what I've been doing lately at home in terms of uh, polygon hair rigging development. Um, well, it's quite simple my uh, default stuff, but I've been, I mean, I consider myself a lazy modeler. So I don't, um, I don't know. I don't go to ZBrush and do like fiber mesh and the fancy stuff. I mean, uh, for these guys, it's only like the hair tubes, you know, like this. Uh, it's pretty much all there is. All my latest characters are modeled with hair style like this. Basically, the hairs are all been made from one and the same base mesh. Um, so now I've been like starting to think about how to rig these things because before it was just like you know to pose the character and stuff uh, um, mm, copying the skin from body to this and obviously that's like a pain in the arse the skin and it doesn't look very nice and it's not controlled it's nothing so I've been coming up with a few solutions and I found one that's really good um, for these purposes um, that basically, well, I'm basically aiming for procedural rigging, which I don't have to do like any input, um, at least not on the annoying parts. Um, so that's like, a few things I've been doing now. So this, this, this few lines of code rig the whole thing up. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit now. So basically, all the hairs are modeled in a way where they have a hole in them, you know, they're open at the base. Um, so I brought a proc, it's called um, Rig Tube Procedural from Border Edge. And so basically what this um, procedure does is it finds the border edge, it converts that to, uh, to um, vertex, it increases the selection, subtracts the previous vertex group, and every for each iteration like that, it uh, averages the positions of all the vertices and places a joint on that position. Then it generates a curve through that, rebuilds the curve to the number of uh, samples that I specify in here, and then it places a joint per CV and deletes the old joints as they are not evenly spaced across the things, which are, would be nice to have. Um, so once that happens, uh, I generate this uh, the extra curve, generate the joints, make the spline IK, skin the joints to the the hair tube and then that's it then I wrap those curves to this low risk driving object and from there um, yeah basically there's a little step in between us and I turn this object into a high risk object and then control the low risk cage for it I'll show you that in a minute um, then obviously when I've wrapped the curves, I remove the first CV from each curve from the wrap so that they don't detach from the hair surface, uh, from the head surface. And then um, I cluster the first CV, parent constrain it to the head joint so that the thing goes along for the right. So let's just show the little things here. Um, so the first section here basically generates all the joints and curves and IKs procedurally per tube. So in the head, there's um, like three groups, a hair model long, medium and short, that basically just allows me to create separate uh, hair systems for the different lengths of hair, that, mm, so I can like dedicate different behaviors for lengths, which is quite necessary for different lengths. So I stored them in that, then it like, gets those, it lists the relatives of type um, geometry, then it makes the groups for the for the each type, and then it runs the procedural tube rigging thing, and that's it. Let's just run this to like show you what it actually looks like. Okay, so now you can see um, it's going through each mesh, looping from the base, iterating through each edge ring, making a joint, then you can't see that step because it's quite fast, but you can see how it makes like a lot of joints and then not so many. Uh, so it basically means it makes a joint per ring, then it loops a curve through it, rebuilds that curve, and then makes a joint through the curve CV. So it's basically just to make the joint count more reasonable. Um, yeah, so this takes like 
two minutes to do, so I won't be going through waiting for this. Uh, just pop up a finished version. There we go. Um, so this is finished. So once that's finished, let's pull up the admin for this guy. So once it's finished, it makes a group like this with like a whole bunch of joint and rig curves with like all the joints and all the curves and IK splines and whatnot. Um, oh, I should delete these guys. This was from another test using wire deformers, but um, the performance wasn't that great. I mean, it was like one frame per second faster than a skin cluster, but wire deformers are quite uh, like I don't like. To use them that much because they don't have they, they lack a twist attribute um, so that's the thing why I still kept using joints because they're way more stable so yeah now basically once that's done you get like all the curves and now you want to wrap them to a mesh like this so it's already done here but I'll show you what I did here just to duplicate this all quickly to redo it uh, delete the original shapes these ones so there's this mesh, so I did is I smoothed it twice, like that, and then I've wrapped the curves to this mesh. So now it's quite smooth and there's like a lot of verts to sample to, so the curves deform quite smoothly. So once I did that, I just go back into the uh, attribute editor, make this guy intermediate and the original shape non-intermediate. So now when I mo control this guy, like that. Let's just go back to the original shape. You can see how it aligns to it. Now it automatically updated. So let's just do that really quickly live. So you can see basically how the whole thing deforms like quite smoothly uh, if I move these guys around. Uh, you couldn't achieve that with a wrap from a low to a high res object. It just wouldn't sample that greatly. Uh, because it lacks the internal subdivision uh, methodologies like the shrink wrap has now, but I cannot use this guy either because it's not a true wrap. Um, so yeah, that's that. So now, yeah, so once that's done, you wrap the curse to it, and let's just show it in action. In action. You can see you now the hair moves along with the, with the thing. And the cool thing about this is that each hair tube preserves length and proportion so it doesn't get stretched and shared out and uh, weirdly deformed by the like driver mesh like I see, like you can see here um, yeah it goes like pretty well and then obviously you know if you move the hair like that and like from below you can see it can stretch this like a whole lot and the hair stays stuck all the time and you can see like how they slide um, over my deformating, my deforming driver mesh, which basically a, a interesting feature like to do hair blowing in the wind and stuff like that. You know, you could like run a simple Zion deformer on this driving mesh, uh, and like in this state, and then I basically make the hair flowing in the wind quite interestingly. So that's some like interesting stuff to do. And then you can quickly. Since it's just 42 words, you can just quickly turn them back to zero like this. Um, obviously, you wouldn't want to animate like this anyway, because, in, I mean, you can. There's some bad skinning going on here. I mean, you can uh, animate like that, but like you know, you just click here, set a set a key once, and then set another key like that, and uh, oh, I didn't set key. So key, and I can see the key. Like that I'm on auto key, so that's fine. I can see it moving. Uh, obviously, an animator wouldn't really like this solution because it's quite hard to then view the stuff in the graph editor and it's not like a true control that you can select if you want to address a single like bit um 
and it's also like immune to specific control handling tools for like pose savings and shit animation exports and all that stuff so I would rather just like, cluster the thing and drive the clusters by controls or maybe even just create controls and directly connect the guys to the uh, translation of the of the CVs for this driving mesh um, yeah that's like one more step that I did to save quite a bit of performance on this rig um, basically you know when I create the things there's like a lot of separate tube meshes but this guy this is combined geometry so what I did to do that is basically just duplicating the hair model group uh, combining all the meshes into one, skinning them to all the joints from the original hair, and then copying the skin with the uh, skin copy weights. I basically just did copy them quite nicely and preserved each um, uh, each hair stream weighting quite well. So I didn't have to do any skinning on these guys yet. Obviously you saw here a little bit of artifacting is, but that's probably more based because the model is not that great I mean I should probably up the like the horizontal edges a little bit on some streams but that's the cool thing about this because since it's like completely procedural I can change the hair model type uh, like the hair density and resolutions of these guys like a lot and it, as long as I have the tube shape and the border, the open borders at the base, the script would do the exact same thing. Uh, so it's like no work to break the whole thing like it is now. And like the amount of control that you can get from this very little, uh, like very low res mesh is already quite nice. I mean, obviously, it's not like a pair hair control, but nobody wants that really, I guess. Uh, nobody wants to be messing with like. 10 controls per hair and there's 80 hairs in the character which is probably still like not a lot it could be like 200 400 hairs in a character depending on how thick you make them I make them quite thick here so I didn't like, go with a lot of hair uh, but yeah that's like what I've been doing now on hair rigging I think it's doing quite well I've been doing some other experiments like with wire deformers instead of spline IK chains and stuff like that but it didn't work out so well because they like overstretch so they don't preserve the length uh, as nicely as this guy does you can see I can stretch that and preserve the length and uh, did some stuff trying to wrap to control each curve by the lattice and then wrap the lattice but that wasn't as fast as I hoped to uh, a lot of stuff a little bit of R&D going on here um, but yeah that's basically it um, I wanted to do a video about my latest like boo break right now, but maybe let's, let's see if I do that or not. Um, as I only have 15 minutes per video, I should stop right now because it's getting quite close to the end. Um, so if you got any questions on this, guys, please don't hesitate, write me, and see you in the next one.